is that you started a new idea to go ahead with the product development. Uh, initially, for your survival, who, who is supporting? Like, uh, there is a initial money is required. You work as a promoter or you work as a employee of the incubating, hey, incubator? I mean, in what way you earn your livelihood? So in my case, uh, you know, before we got the seed funding, I put in my own money and, you know, started the, this thing. Uh, but when we got the DFJ seed funding, that helped. And later on, when Rakesh Mathur came in as an investor, again, that was a... So there were three levels of funding. First, personal, then DFJ, and Nadathur, and then uh, Rakesh Mathur. Um, I was a student, so my family, really. Um, and uh, um, actually, I, uh, I think that's the right thing to do is put some more skin in the game because no matter how good the idea, no matter how talented the person is, commitment is uh, very, very important at the early stage. And uh, I think that uh, uh, if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is, then uh, that's, uh, that's something that's required, I think. For us, I mean, there was some portion that was funded, uh, which was which was very limited expense. I would say the total expense would have been about fifty thousand rupees that we incurred before you know we actually raised capital. Uh, so that was primarily you know local conveyance in in Bombay to go and meet people and and things like that, which which basically we funded from our pocket money, you know, as as, as students and our and our and I had worked uh, during my practical training and I'd saved up quite a bit because I worked overseas. Uh, then, of course, it was uh, we raised capital. Myself and my co-founder took a salary of about ten thousand rupees a month, and and we we used the rest uh, rest of the capital to pay salaries to the employees. Yeah, we took ten thousand rupees a month. Yeah. But, sir, yeah. You became an employee. No, as it well was not. I, I don't think um, these were these were the times when um, most of my batch, when they were graduating, were, were getting about four lakhs an annum. Uh, we took uh, uh, we very steadily took a salary of ten thousand rupees, which we didn't change for three years, okay. you know, which um, in my opinion is fair salary. No, it's for, I mean, it's good. I mean, yeah. that's what my question yeah. was just you, your sustenance. How was it happening? Like? Yeah, it, you can you can sustain yourself in multiple ways. I think that most businesses today sh is the business. The focus of the business is sustenance. No. I mean, when a person is a student in an incubator, how much is his real expense? He doesn't have a family, a wife, a kid, etc. So his expenses are really, he should be working 18 hours a day and then he's got, you know, Maggie noodles and XYZ as his expenses for the first one year of his life while he does this. So, I mean, I think 10,000 rupees a month is good enough, you know, uh, as a salary. No, 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 it's no. not. No. But, but we did raise professional capital. So we raised money from, from external investors. But, yeah. Yeah, but only one point. That's what uh, yesterday in the discussion, he said word of caution. Like, word of caution, see that uh, money which you got from loan was spent for, I mean, not you, in the sense those incubators, there is a possibility of uh, using it for personal uh, use rather than for the company. I think that happens when you are funding people who have worked in the real world. I don't think that happens when you are funding students, because the students are still not touched by the bad real world, you know where they end up realizing that, no, why don't I take one lakh out of the loan and put it in my house? Or let me buy a Maruti 800 or whatever it is that, they, that the real world people tend to do. I'm a mentor right now in the iAccelerator, so I can tell you a little bit of what I do. Um, so in the, in the first step, the, the, the first thing that I did was, was helping with the screening of talking to the companies. As soon as students came in and we'd accepted teams, a lot of what I did was was helping take what had been fairly broad ideas when they got sort of accepted into the program and, and help sort of like break that down into something that was actually like immediately achievable. Like we, we, we needed to sort of get past the big idea phase and get down into something that people could work on. Um, on an ongoing basis, I helped them with technical questions. Um, and, and then I also do these, these sort of weekly sort of sort of light project management like I'm I'm not I'm not the boss I'm not trying to be the boss but I'm trying to give them some sort of supervision um, other things that IIM does 
is that IIM also brings in other sort of um, kind of mentors, other sort of entrepreneurs, successful business people from the community and sort of brings them in and to talk about their experience and then also to give sort of like more, more sort of like one-time advice. And so, so then each of the incubatees will have a conversation with this, you know, this sort of high profile person where, you know, he'll talk and that's, and so they line up a, a bunch of things on a one on one on one, but a one time basis, whereas my relationship has been ongoing. I think uh, at sign also, we keep having a lot of high profile uh, visitors uh, and they give uh, lectures or have one on one sessions, etc. Uh, but uh, there is no ongoing uh, activity where, you know, there is a specific mentor and, you know, any, any a company. I think that is also being explored, uh, if uh, Professor Amarnath can talk about that. See, at Sain we have three professionals who are already resident. Well, I would say they are more like the general practitioner. You know, uh, Poini is a uh, company secretary and she was a vice president at ICICI. Sushanto headed some, I also worked in some of the top consulting companies. Uh, Krishmani came from a SBI background where she was a probationary officer, rose to fairly high level. So these three within the, uh, these three together, they consult a lot of our companies. Many of our companies come to us for advice. Uh, as he said, you know, in the very initial stages, they don't even know what to how to address the business. Whether the product should meet a user, usually the product tends to meet your requirement and not the user requirement. All these problems are to be sorted out. Now you may say they don't know much about uh, technology, how do they do that? Well, they do it. As simple as that. I can't do it. Let me be clear. My role is to act as an intermediary between IIT and uh, them. And also when a student or faculty member walks in, he finds it comforting to see a familiar figure. You know, a, a professor whom he has known for a long time. So I don't intrude into the business area at all. I just do not intrude because I know that it is something which they understand. They three have been handling these things for a long, long time and they understand. So one of the most important things is to have a person like that running your incubator, not a professor. Let me again say, we are not equipped to deal with the nitty gritty of business. You should have a competent person in place who will run the show. And remember, running an incubator is not rent collection. It should not reduce down to collecting rent. You should have a person like this. And as he just now pointed out, when the young people come in, he takes them through. Run it like a business. You have the competent person in place to manage the whole show. And he should give competent advice. Because whether you think succeeds or fails depends on that. And when the VC comes, don't have a clerk sitting there. Nor can you talk. Because we don't understand that language, to be frank. It has taken me three years. Now maybe I might be able to just utter a couple of words. But I won't venture. Thank you. About the mentorship, um, I've tried to dabble in it. I mean, as, a, as an angel investor in some companies and things like that. Uh, I think there are a dime a dozen of mentors who will who will point out flaws in the business plan and tell the guys that, you know, you shouldn't be doing this, you should be doing that, and this is what the competition is doing and things like that. Uh, what I would rather, I think there are very few mentors who actually say that, you know, stick with your business plan. You know, it, there is a certain amount of time before when you write a business plan, you execute it in the market and for that to translate into dollars. You know, so you need to have a mentor who is, who one is, is, is slightly thinking long term you know who who is who is who is not gonna you know in the board meeting focus on the day to day collections receivables etc because obviously the guy already knows it the ceo of the company or the head of the sales already knows that yeah revenues have not been collected what i projected as 1 million dollars has become 100000 dollars you know the question is to is to is to have a mentor who can support and continue to be the stabilizing influence because at times like this, when, when things are going downwards, there is a great deal of instability. So the mentor is supposed to be the one who brings that stability, especially to a young team. You know? So I think that's the most important role. It's the most important role is not when things are going well, but to, you know, 
when things are not going well to be that stabilizing force and to tell him that don't worry nothing has changed between yesterday and today you know between 3 months ago when you decided to start the business and and today when you know when you realizing that companies in the space are all going bankrupt and no one has decided to fund you nothing has really changed continue to focus on your plan if there are minor tweaks etc do it etc or if you feel as a major strategic change bounce it off me but continue to stick by the plan give it reasonable amount of time for it to generate dollars you know couple of points i think great points made uh, so i think to me a mentor a good mentor is uh, one who makes you ask the right questions um if uh, you're looking for answers from the mentor if you're looking from decision for decisions from the mentor um there is a flaw in the business or there's a flaw in the management um so and also mentors who insist on answering questions or making decisions i think are not good mentors so i think a mentor who can force you to ask the right questions um and then uh, accept your answers and and well ask you more questions uh, is a good mentor um and um secondly i think a mentor i would expect uh, him to introduce me to opportunities which i would otherwise not be exposed to so i would definitely look for uh, you know besides being that conscience asking questions um somebody who can open doors for me uh, which otherwise i have no way of getting to one more thing is a mentor can bring in lot of contacts so so that is another very important so if you have some challenges and one of the challenge is how to reach out to a certain type of customer or certain type of uh, you know when you are trying to recruit or something uh, uh, a mentor may help you on that front as well so that you should tell your companies you go to the mentor mentor won't come many companies expect the mentor to come to them it doesn't happen you have to go the companies have to go the incubator manager must ensure that the company he, should, he shows them the mentors and tries to link the two up that's it beyond that it is up to the company so we have noticed this happening that's why i thought i should mention this